a modular approach is the only way to go. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. So in late 2023, I committed to carrying an HT every single day for the next year. Being well into that experiment now, I have learned quite a bit along the way. And it has caused me to reevaluate what I'm carrying on a daily basis as far as the HT is concerned. Now, if I'm only going to be gone from the house for just a couple of hours, I'm probably not going to carry very much. It's probably just going to be a basic HT. Something like, uh, say, the VX6 by Yezu, or maybe the Redivus RA89. Both of these are great radios, and they give me uh, a basic set of capabilities if I need an HT radio. Capabilities like basic voice communications, we also have weather alerts that we could use, and those radios can monitor several other bands, including FRS and GMRS. Now, if I'm going to be gone for a little bit longer, say up to 12 hours, I'm probably going to swap over to a radio like the D75, just because it gives me a tremendous amount of capabilities. Now, you don't have to rush out and spend big bucks on an HT like that. You could get away with something as simple as the Yezu VX6 or even a Yezu FT65 and just pair that with a MobiLink TNC and you'd get the vast majorities of the capabilities of that D75 radio. In addition to the HT, I'm also going to carry my little compact EDC HT kit. And of course, I would have my phone on me as well. Now, this expands the capabilities by quite a bit. On the radio itself, I've got, obviously, uh, tri-band voice capabilities. It also has built-in APRS right here on the radio, and it will act as an APRS digipeter if you need that capability. The other thing I like about that particular radio is because of its TNC built in, I can connect it with my phone, which allows me to do packet WinLink, and it allows me to grab that APRS incoming data and pull that into my phone. That allows me to see the APRS stations on the map, as well as making it a lot easier to send and receive APRS messages. Now, when it comes to using the phone with that D75, I run an iPhone, so I am using the BB link that uh, the guy from Radio Mail just released maybe a month or two back. This is a fabulous product and something you absolutely need if you're going to use the iPhone with that D75. But once I have this thing powered up, now if you're running a later model iPhone that has USB-C on the bottom, you can simply plug this device right into the USB-C connector on the bottom of the phone. Unfortunately, I'm still running an older iPhone, and until I upgrade, I have to use a battery bank to power this device, and then I can use it to connect the phone to the radio. Once I've got everything connected with the phone and the BB Link and the radio, then I've got the capability of either running an application like APRS.fi or Pocket Packet for APRS. I prefer Pocket Packet because it does a little bit better in a strictly offline scenario. But uh, either one of those applications will work for you and does um, it makes sending APRS messages tremendously easier. In addition to being able to run APRS with the phone, I can also use the BB Link to connect radio mail to the D75, and that gives me a packet connection. Now, that doesn't give me VARA FM because uh, we're using the TNC on the radio for that packet connection, and it only uh, the TNC only takes packet. So, in order to do VARA FM, you've got to grab a laptop and go a different route. Now, if the trip extends into an overnight trip, say up to 24 hours, now I'm going to add a couple more things to that basic kit that you've already seen. Things like a good laptop. And in addition to that, I'm going to add a three amp hour battery. 
that does a few things for me. A, that three amp hour battery gives me more runtime on whichever radio or radios I've carried with me. And it frees up the battery bank that stays in this little bag to keep my phone charged up. In order to charge a radio from that 3 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery, I do have a cable here made up. And guys, I'll leave links to some of these down in the description below because it is kind of difficult to figure out exactly which side you need. Uh, again, this basic adapter here has a 5.5 by 2.1 millimeter connector on the end of it. In addition to this, I've got two of these little adapters. So these uh, have two different barrel sizes on this end here, but they both take the 5.5 millimeter connector from that cable as uh, the on the back end of it. So this allows me, the yellow tip will adapt me over to a Yezu style radio. And then if I need to connect the Kenwood or the Evolve laptop, they happen to be the exact same size, then I can use this particular connector here that's got the red tip on it. Again, I'll leave links to those down in the description below because it did take me uh, a couple of times of trial and error to figure out exactly what size connectors these were. The addition of the laptop gives me both the ability to do FL Digi using the HT as well as giving me the ability to do Vara FM uh, Winlink connections instead of just having packet available to me. Now, when it comes to using the laptop with the radio, I am going to go with something like the DigiRig Lite. Now, this one here is one of the early prototypes that I have, and I actually prefer this form factor over the uh, production version that came out. This thing is super, super tiny. It takes up no room at all in my bag, but uh, this allows me to use Vara FM with Pat Winlink uh, with the D75. Of course, you do need the necessary cable for your radio to go into this, but that allows me to use Vara FM. It allows me to use Yak and it allows me to use FL Digi, which we use here in my area for a digital net every Tuesday night. Now, keep in mind, these are just general guidelines and what works for me may or may not work for you. I just wanted to kind of give you guys an idea. Also, the time frames that I've laid out, you know, the couple of hours and then up to 12 hours, well, those as well are just guidelines. Let's say, for instance, I'm going to go out and help the Ham Radio Club support an event today. Well, I'm obviously going to carry more battery capacity with me and the laptop with me, even though it may be as short as a four or five hour outing. Just in that setting, I know I'm going to be using the radio more, I'm going to be consuming more power, and I'm likely going to need a way to recharge my batteries. And that's just an example of one time that I might add more gear to the kit, changing the original guidelines. But on a day-to-day -day basis, if it, nothing really crazy going on or I'm not helping support an event or something like that, then the general guidelines that I gave you as we went through this video are pretty much what I adhere to. Keeping everything modular allows me to carry just the gear I need and not be weighted down with unnecessary gear. It helps me to have a more enjoyable experience. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.